In this lecture, we're going to discuss artwork under Napoleon, and we're going to talk about four different artists. We're going to start with David and talk about Gro, Ang, and also Canova. Artwork under Napoleon is still very neoclassical in nature, but it is not as harsh or revolutionary. With the French Revolution in 1789, the overthrow of the monarchy leaves room for Napoleon essentially to rise to power. And his reign is from 1804 to 1815, and he really uses art as propaganda. This art is damage control for Napoleon's reputation, and he's using art as a new PR tool for the people. And at this time, artists are jostling for commissions from Napoleon because he is uh, the biggest patron at this time. And as we know a little bit about Jacques-Louis David's history, we know that he aligned himself with Robespierre and the Revolution of France. He barely escapes with his life, and he does go to prison for a time and has a trial. He is out in 1795 and tries to reestablish his career. And then in 1804, Napoleon offers him a job. So David becomes the first painter of the empire, and most of his works are artworks glorifying Napoleon. He's still a neoclassical painter um, in his style, but it's not nearly as revolutionary. It is still, however, representing power and authority, and this is really what Napoleon wants. Artists flatter Napoleon and depict him larger than life. In this painting, this is the coronation of Napoleon. So here we have Napoleon crowning his wife, we have the Pope off to the right here giving blessing and witnessing. This is showing the authority of state over the church. And all of this pomp and pageantry is happening inside Notre Dame, um, which really did happen, but probably uh, not exactly as it's depicted here. This is David's depiction of Napoleon crossing the Alps, which he does do. However, he depicts Napoleon as larger than life in this in comparison to everything else going on. He is as larger, larger than the mountain. Napoleon really does cross the Alps, but in actuality, he uses a mule in wintertime to cross over. And it looks as if Napoleon is going to cross the Alps in one bound. This is about idealization and glorifying himself. Napoleon Bonaparte. We see his name in the bottom left-hand corner, so there is no doubt. Napoleon actually comes to David's studio, and David takes up the banner for Napoleon. The artists really are competing for the patronage of Napoleon. Here we have another example of artist propaganda, and this is by Gro, who is a student of David's. Napoleon is depicted here in the center as a healer, and this is really a reference of Jesus healing the sick. Napoleon is approaching and actually touching a man, scratching his head. That's a classic sign of insanity. With Gro depicting Napoleon as a Christ-like healer, he is putting him in the best political light and portraying him with timeless authority. This is a huge painting, and it has a lot to do with Napoleon's campaign in the Holy Lands in 1799. Um, Jaffa is a port city, and it is much sought after. And it's very neoclassical in its depiction. We can see the arcade of the arches in the background. This style, this neoclassical style, that is referencing Greek and Roman history as he builds, rebuilds France. And this is what Napoleon wants. He wants to rebuild France as if it's the Roman Empire uh, conquering many, many lands. Antonio Canova left a very successful career in Italy to move to Paris and serve the emperor. And this was obviously by Napoleon's demand. Antonio Canova was Napoleon's favorite sculptor. Uh, this is a portrait of Pauline Borghese, who was the emperor's sister. And at her request, she is being depicted as a Roman goddess of love in a very classical manner. She is reclining on a couch or divan. She's holding a golden apple, a symbol of the goddess's triumph in the judgment of Paris. This piece has references to Roman sarcophagus lids and Hellenistic statues. And Canova demonstrates his ability with marble by depicting smooth flesh as well as a soft cushion. Napoleon arranged a marriage with this noble Roman Borghese family. Her behavior was not very good, however, she had many affairs. Her husband did keep this portrait, and it's still in the Via Borghese today in Rome. 
Another painter who paints for Napoleon's reputation is Jean-Auguste Dominique Ang, which is another student of David's, probably his greatest pupil. Ang's style, however, is quite a bit different. Um, it is very true uh, in Greek form. It's very precise, very hidden brush strokes, almost referencing Jan van Eyck's Ghent altarpiece in its minute detail, in its extreme detail and crisp lines and form. His style is very harsh. He's obsessed with detail and texture, gold, velvet, and this is depicting Napoleon enthroned. And there is no doubt here of the power that is conveyed about Napoleon and his reputation in this painting. As we start to understand these paintings and the culture in which they're made, and really the meaning behind them and how they were uh, used and manipulated for certain reasons, it's fun then as we assimilate them and understand them to find them in pop culture even. This is a screenshot from uh, Despicable Me, the first one. I nearly fell over when I saw it the first time and got really excited. Whoever the designers and artists were for Despicable Me understood art history. So they are using a copy basically of Aang's painting of Napoleon depicting him in such power and authority. They are using that as a replica in a slightly different style, but they are putting Mr. Perkins, the evil banker, into the position of Napoleon here and putting him in a larger than life uh, painting with a frame uh, and setting himself up as this leader and this powerful authority figure so that that grew is overwhelmed by his position and his power. To me, this really puts art into context. If you can know and understand art history and what has been done and understand its purpose, um, you will find references like this in pop culture. So it really helps us to understand initial meaning behind things. So try looking for the, these things as you go about in your daily life.